Well, welcome back to my studio. Today I'm painting a little rooster. And this guy, as you can see, I've got my reference taped up to the easel on the side of my canvas there. So I'm going to begin sketching him up with a thin oil mixture of my mud, which is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson. And I mix liquid into that to make it uh, more fluid and, and make it a better wash. I want his head to be right in this area. So I start, let's say I want to move him over. I want to leave a little room to his left since he's moving that direction. We want to give him room to move. We don't want him right next to the edge of the canvas. So this is, give his head in and then we'll, then we can do the rest of his body around it. His comb comes up. Head comes down. His hackles are raised. They call these neck feathers on a rooster hackles, or on a chicken, I guess. That's where that term came, he's raised his hackles. You, you know, when you can see, I don't know if, if you've been around any roosters, but if you have, you'll see if they get upset that those neck feathers just fluff out. So we call it raising his hackles. Then he's got these feathers coming over his back are called the saddle. He's kind of turned toward us. He's, and uh, his body's here, his legs back. He's walking. His legs here. This one's kind of back, and then the other one's forward. And, and back of this one, you don't see it, but it's going forward. You don't see it as much. I may have to make some adjustments as I go along, but this is kind of getting him sort of started in here. And these, these feathers come over his back, and his tail feathers come up. We really, I, I love to, to do their feathers, and he just, I let him run off the edge of the canvas. I love to get a nice curl in them. I'm not following my reference exactly, but actually my reference is a painting that I've done before that my collector saw and she said, I really like that little rooster, so I, this one's going to be similar. Not, I can never make them exactly the same anyway, so there's no danger of that. And then these feathers underneath here. This kind of just gives me his basic shape. What I'll do is I'll to look at him in the mirror. I paint with a mirror behind me. And this is something that Jack discovered when reading about Leonardo da Vinci, that this is a something that Leonardo did. And it, what it does is it switches the image in your brain from the inventive or creative, we call it, a lot of people say the creative side. Jack said the only person who created, made something out of nothing, was God. We're, we're artists. We're inventive. We take things that are already there and then make things. So we're, we're inventive. We're not creative. But anyway, it moves it from the inventive side of your brain to the analytical side. And that way you can really judge your painting by looking at it in the mirror. It reverses, reverses the image and you see it as if somebody else has painted it. And that's, I don't remember it's the right side of your brain or the left side of your brain, but that's the, that's how it works. This leg comes down, this one's a little too high there, this one actually goes right there. But anyway, that's got his body blocked in, or, or drawn in, kind of the outline in. Now I'm taking a wash of my alizarin crimson plus the liquid. And I'm just going to wash in the red of his comb. This gives me a nice red underneath that. It'll be dry when I come back to paint it, but it just covers the canvas and gives me a nice luminescent, luminescent red in there. Comb comes over. And he has 
this red comes around his eye, or his beak there, and then the, his wattles. one of the few brushes I use that is not one of the flats or the square tip brushes. It's called a round. And this just comes to a nice point and I can that red will come down there. There's his beak. I can just brace my hand against the canvas, the unpainted part of the canvas. And then, so the red actually comes down here comes kind of over his over his beak. And his beak comes actually comes back a little bit more. See? And I can by that wash I can just I have a clean brush. I've wiped it, I've dipped it in my thinner, wiped the brush, and then I can just come back and lift that color off. That's the nice about washing in your, your paintings with this thin mixture because you can you can erase. How I start all of my paintings is with a, a wash drawing. So I'm going to get his eye in here. Put the pupil in. Now the light's coming from the upper left, so he's going to have a little catch light here. That's right in the middle of his pupil. That's where I do not want it. You don't want to put the catch light in the middle of the pupil because whatever your subject, a bird, a person, a dog, makes them look like they're on drugs, it looks spaced out. And you look at photographs, you get lights bouncing from all different directions and there will a lot of times be a light within the middle of the pupil. But actually, to paint it, to make it look real, you want your catch light to be up about like if it's from the upper left, you want your catch light to be about 11 o'clock and at the junction of the pupil and the iris. I'm just trying to lift out that color. Brushes a little bit. I have to work at it. Okay, now I'll have to come back and make that a little bit smaller. But that's where we want our catch light to be. I say I've got that too big, but let me come back and make that smaller. My wash is a little bit thinner than I normally make it, so it's not cooperating as well. But there. Okay, we've got the catch light in there. And then the iris on this side is also a little lighter. That just lets, gives me the... Um, it's roughed in. I'll come back and paint this. Okay, now I need to redo this again. Sometimes you have to do it several times. Just try. But there, there's the catch light. A little bit big. But what I can do is I have his eye a little bit big, but I can come back actually and make it smaller. Well, I'm just having a fun time today on this one. Okay, let's start over on that eye. I'm going to do it in totally dark. That's about the right size. Okay, now let's make our catch light. Let's see if I can do this a little better this time. There we go. And then he's a little lighter down here. Again, this is not paint. This is just roughed in so I know where his eye is going to be. But that kind of gives you an idea. But that's how I start out. Again, I had his leg in the wrong place. I could come back in, wet that down with my thinner, and just erase. Erase the lines that I don't like. Now there's going to be grass back here. I'll put that in. And 
This is also a little high, I realize, right there. There we go, that, that works better. And this is a little wide. our rooster. He's, he's sketched in. So I really appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel. Also, visit my blog. The link is in the description below. It's also on the final frame of my YouTube video. The address is. And you can visit my blog and see the complete step-by-step -step process of this painting and also others that I do. You can also subscribe to my blog. So I really appreciate you watching today. You have a wonderful, wonderful day.